4, 402-2893. See, I remember. <laughs> you know, after three months, well, no, actually four months now. Um, and of course, we get into our fourth annual, fourth annual NFL preview. We'll start this year's preview with the AFC North. And let's talk about Sean Lover's beloved. Six times. Six time Super Bowl champion, Six time. Super Bowl champion, Pittsburgh Steelers, and of course, um, and it's and it's actually funny that we how we how we're gonna do this. Of course, um, next week we'll be previewing the AFC and the NFC South. And then we'll do the West the following week, and then we'll do and we'll wrap up with the East. So of course we're gonna go from pretty much from Pittsburgh to the Washington Redskins. So you know, so stay around, man. Stay, <laughs> stay, stay tuned, you know. So you know, Risky. let's get let's get to the business of the, um, the Pittsburgh Steelers of last year. Um, last year, of course, guys were um, well. I guess like, we can do it, you guys because you, you you know that's what we do here. You know, couch coaches we identify our team when we talk about our teams. We say we we you know, that's 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 this couch coach. It's the couch coach rule. If you if you got a team and you got to call them we because uh, you are part okay. of it. So, we we so. you can talk about we. But I'm talking yeah. about me and the Steelers. I'm not talking about coach. I can't say we. No, I'm saying, I mean, that's what I'm saying. You. I'm saying uh, anybody who identifies with a team, they have to address it as we. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's, I mean, that's. that's that, I think that's that's the that's. I'm a, I'm gonna do like a couch coach ten commandments. <laughs> okay. The first one is gonna be if you have a team, you gotta address them as we. Okay. Yeah. So, Pittsburgh Steelers, of course, um, last year was eleven and five. Um, guys were very, very close to um to going to Super Bowl. Of course, you guys lost to the uh, New England Patriots in the AFC Championship game last year. Um, yeah, sadly, but it's just one of those things where it's just you know very interesting. Now, the two games, and of course, in, during this preview, I'll I'll always give um two ten, two games. I think, in my personal opinion, that um that are the top games for them to watch. Now, of course, you got a week 15 date versus the pa- the Patriots. And, of course, I think that's a situation where um, at week 15, that's what we'll, uh, probably going to determine who gets home field. Because I think if, from from how I'm projecting everything going forward, barring anything, catastrophic injuries or whatever, I think it's probably going to be like one, two, New England, New England and Pittsburgh as far as buying for, you know, I think both of you at this point from what I'm from what I've been projecting so far and you know, just to kinda of tip my hand, that these are probably the two top teams in the um who'll be getting the bye week. Um, you know, who'll be playing in the divisional round, having a home division around and now it's gonna be a matter of who's gonna have the home field. And I think that's going to that's gonna be a very pivotal game for you guys. And then I look at week twelve versus Green Bay. This is one of those things where AFC, AFC versus NFC matchup, where this could be a possibly a potential Super Bowl preview. Okay. It, it it has it has that type of it would have it's probably going to have that type of feel. That'd be good. So I want that to go back. Mm-hmm. It's, it's you know it's it's possible. Um, and of course, I think with the Steelers, um, of course, there's a lot of pros with them. Of course, you got five Pro Bowlers on the offense. Um, you got Martel Mar- Talis Bennett coming back from the suspension, um, and I think you're gonna. And I think for the most part, I think with Darius Green's gonna come back, and I think he's gonna come back very healthy at your tight end position. Um, Le'Veon Bell had a he had a pretty good year last year. Um, he had um, 1100, 1100 yards last season, uh, and I was very impressed of what he did in the playoffs. I think um, he I think he had three hundred. In forty, what was it? Three hundred and forty something yards last year. He had three in the uh, playoff. In in the um, when y'all played Kansas City, he played Miami, and also in the New England game. I think in those three games, he had three hundred and seventy, three hundred thirty-seven yards. Pardon me, three three hundred thirty-seven yards last in those three games. I like that, and of course, um, of course. We call them three Bs. You got Big Ben, Le'Veon, of course, Antonio Brown. Um, he's the second player in NFL history to have 100 plus catches, 
in four straight money. years, and of course, he, and, and, and deservedly so, that he, he, that he got his money. And Le'Veon is on the try out. And I think Le'Veon's going to be there. And I think with, you know, with him not showing up to camp, and that's one thing, like, these, you know, these little ancillary stories, I think he, he'll be back in time. And I think with him, where he's at, I think he needs to kind of do what he got to do to get to it. I, I'm, I, I, you know, because we definitely can probably have a lot of these stories trickling in with guys all coming to camp. And I'm like, I, you, this is just little smoke screens, and they'll be fine. I think, you know, it, uh, you know, they'll be fine. Um, and I like I like you guys receiving call. I look at uh, Marcus Wheaton, and you also look at um, Sammy Coates. I think he kind of came onto his own a little bit last year. Um, yeah, and I, and I like your defense, and of course, you guys have that classic 3-4 defense with that primary zone coverage. The only thing I don't like about it, well, that too. Um, I do like the youth movement that you had um, as far as with defense, I think you had three starters that were rookies last year that, that started. And um, I think the biggest thing is the, getting the pressure of the quarterback. I thought that was kind of a, um, you know, was, it was, you know, you didn't get a lot of um, a lot of pressure to the quarterback, but he, he still last year did finish seventh in total defense. So I mm-hmm. thought that was, you know, pretty impressive. Um, the secondary, I, I honestly think you guys are improving. And, of course, you're getting younger. Of course, you got um, I got Artie Burns and also Sean Davis there. So I think that's going to help you guys going forward. So I, I look at the Steelers. I think when I put down as far as the cons for them, it, it's really certain things. I mean, of course, I think it's just more so of the pass rush and then just getting over New England and then Big Ben's health. Yeah. Which and, and then you also looked at um, Big Ben, he had – it was weird. He, um, far as his, I think he had like 3,800 yards passing, which I think was one of his lowest in his career. But he also had what 29, 29, pardon me, 29 touchdowns, which I think was third highest in his career. And you could tell there was like a disparage of play between playing at home versus away. So, mm-hmm. you know, I still think that's gonna, you know, that's gonna help propel you to win this division, which will that will divulge to our. Records, uh, predictions for that soon. Um, so, of course, let's talk about the Cincinnati Bengals. Now, the Cincinnati Bengals um, last year were six, nine, and one, and of course, that lone tie was a uh, unfortunate tie in London for my beloved Washington Redskins. And I think to this day, it it it, it ate me away. I I felt like really sick after that day. I did. I really felt. It was so weird because I remember I was just laying on the couch and I just like felt so hot. Like I never felt like like hot, like literally like my from my head to my toes, like hot. Like it was to a point where I think that day was still was a hot day, but I remember like I had to open up windows and turn on the fans. I just was so like pissed about the game. <laughs> because, you know, that's I was really mad about that play. Well well, you know, we're talking about the Redskins on August eighteenth. Thank you. So it's going on now. You know? So the top games I, I see the Bengals that you, that um, that are worth watching. Of course, um, they have a day with the Tennessee Titans in, in Week Ten, and then they got a road game as well against Denver in Week Eleven. And I think those two games are pivotal because I think with the Bengals, I still I I think in my personal opinion, and I got a lot of slack for this, you know, I still think they are a good team. And these in these two games, and pretty much in the teeth of the season. It's gonna it's gonna prove it because I think Tennessee and Denver is somewhat on their level. I look at Tennessee as a team that I think it could possibly win ten to eleven games this year. And then Denver, who knows with Denver? Because Denver, even though they were a, 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 a semi five hundred team last year, I still think they can might take the league, and it's all you know, all pretty much contingent on like Paxton Lynch development. So I think those two games, especially in that time frame where they're back to back road games where in essence you have you you go to Tennessee, which is a short trip, and then you gotta go across the country to them. So I think those that will by that time we'll know what Cincinnati thing we're seeing that we're dealing with going forward when we're talking about mid November, late early season. Always it's, it's, to me it's always been like it's just something missing. It's just always just to me. It's always I felt like yeah. you know, being a Steelers fan, they've been better. Yeah, 
for years, it's just mm-hmm. seemed it's like it's something. And then once they do yeah. beat us and mm-hmm. make it, it's like, okay, what do we do now? Yeah. I think what Cincinnati is, Cincinnati is, it, and I know this is sound kind of weird. I, I, I'm not trying to like off the field the situation, but I just think they're in their own way. Yeah. Which is the weirdest thing because, and, I, and even when I talked about this in a group, and I was like, People don't understand the talent level that they have. And I honestly think, and one of my biggest pros with the Bengals are, they're just as talented as the Pittsburgh Steelers. When you look at it offensively. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, you know, it's funny because I remember, yeah. you know, the Ravens, you know, they won their championships. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it was a point where they were in their own way. Like, yeah, they, it's true. When the, when, the, when the Patriots went undefeated, they could have beat them one mm-hmm. time, but they were in their own way. With us, too, we get the playoffs. Yeah, you know, in their own way, they will always choke up. It'd be yeah. their fault, you know. And the Bengals, it's the same thing. The and same thing. and yeah, and I think they're talented. And I look at um, Andy Dalton, I, and this is and everything is all predicated on them being healthy. And I think it, Andy Dalton, because I think he got hurt in week thirteen. Um, mm-hmm. He had, well, well, no, it was um, he actually that was somebody else injured. Pardon me. Um, I think the biggest thing with Andy Dalton last year that, that kind of threw me off was him being sacked 41 times. And I think even between the 2014 and 2015, I think he only got sacked like 30-something times. Mm-hmm. So he got more sacks in the one year combined, you know, compared to the last two years. Mm-hmm. So the offensive line is kind of reshaped. Um, of course, I like their three-headed monster at the running back position. Um, you're looking at... Um, I got Jeremy Hill, who was pretty much in the contract year. I think he's going to um, do a great job. And, of course, my guy, Giovanni Bernard from the University of North Carolina. Um, he's, he'll be coming out from injury, so who knows if he's going to be healthy coming back, um, you know, initially. And, of course, them jo- um, drafting Joe Mixon. Mm-hmm. I think that's a huge, huge acquisition with them. And I think he's the type of running back, I think, who's going to be the future of the team. He's, I think he's going to be able to bridge the gap. Guy, you know, once because I think Jeremy Hill is going to be gone regardless of what he does, and I think Joe Mixon is going to step in and you know do his thing there at the running back position going forward for the future of the Bengals. I got a question. Yes, sir. What do you think about that coach? I mean, um, you know, do you think he should have been fired, or do you think they it's not him? Or? Mm-hmm. That's, a, I'm just that, that. that's a good question. If you're looking at it from an NFL standpoint of how other teams would do it, for somebody who's been around for, I want to say, about 13 years now and has never won a playoff game, yeah. yeah. But with them, their owner is cheap. Their owner is like, it's, it's so, he's tight. He's tight on the dollar. So he gets to a point, he, yeah. So in normal circumstances, he would be fired. I mean, you're looking at like a guy, and it's funny that we talk about this, and you know, I don't want to jump the gun, but we're looking at a guy like a John Harbaugh, which we'll be talking about momentarily, who hasn't made the playoffs what three years out of the last four, and he's on the hot seat, and he's one of two, mm-hmm. which is which is the bizarre thing. Mm-hmm. And just imagine if this was a normal circumstance where a guy has been there since 2003 and has never won a playoff game, mm-hmm. he'd have been out the door years ago. Yeah, but you know the the Brown family are, are very are very cheap, and that and they don't want to pretty much they they don't want to uh, spend much for another coach, and that's just to be real. And, and, that, and that's that's I got just said something's missing. Something's missing. <laughs> you know what I mean, for real, something's missing with the Bengals, and that might be it. And I think yeah. cheap, and it might be they need somebody new to say, hey, we might do this. You know, seem comfortable with me. Yeah. And I think with them, Cincinnati and Eric, that, that we, you know, of course we talk about the talent level, and then we, we go back to the wide receiver position. And there is this very intriguing because you're looking at AJ Green on one side, then you got John Ross, who had a, a combined record of 4 2 40. Mm-hmm. And then I like even Tyler Boyd possibly playing in the slot. I like that dynamic. And then, of course, you got a I got my guy Tyler Eifert at the um, tight end position. So, you know, and my thing is just with the Bengals, you know. So, yeah. So, of course, um, they, like I said, they are the most offensively um, 
I think they're the best team we're looking at from a, if we want to look at from a superlative standpoint, the team that is most likely the best offensive mm-hmm. is going to probably be the Cincinnati Bengals. But with just that factor alone, and and I always and that said their biggest con is themselves. Mm-hmm. And I look at um, and of course they you know they have an improved running game this year, and of course um. I think they're gonna. I think they're gonna be fine going forward. I think they're gonna. They're gonna have a bounce back year. I. I don't. I can't see them having another year that they did this year. My thing is, is some teams always just want to win. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they don't really think, okay, I'm in the playoffs. I'm not trying to win the Super Bowl. They just want to win the division. Yeah, that's how Cincinnati is. Yeah, and I think yeah. that's what happened with them two years ago, yeah. where they got to a point where they they got their their expectations are low. Yeah. Yeah, and that's a good, you know, good point. Cause you look at them, they it, you can even tell that when they beat y'all sometimes, like it's the, like the biggest thing. Right, and it's just know, like running over on the, the next day, or yeah. I mean, and it's just like and it's just very bizarre. But I mean, it's it's to a point where I think he has to win a playoff game because the Bengals have not won a playoff game since 1990. It's crazy. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So let's talk about the Baltimore Ravens we just talked about a little earlier. Um, eight and eight last year. Um, one of the pros I really liked last year um, that they were they were tied for first for the most interceptions. They had eighteen interceptions as as a collective unit, which I thought that was pretty good for Ravens. So you know, that's you know, it's pretty decent for them. You know, for that situation. And I think the games to watch for them, we got a Week 17 matchup against the Bengals. Uh, yeah, you got the Bengals uh, in Week 17, which I think that could possibly, because how I have them kind of projected, they're kind of neck and neck record-wise, as you'll, you know, we'll talk about the predictions momentarily. Um, that could determine who gets that wild card slide or who gets who, who could even – might potentially win the AFC North. I think that could be a pivotal matchup for them. And, of course, uh, week 14 at Pittsburgh. And I look at how what happened on Christmas, mm-hmm. how that changed the fortunes of the Steelers because mm-hmm. the Steelers was kind of like dead in the water. Yeah. And and it's right almost right around the same time. I think week 14 is probably going to be like, I think, the second or third week of December where they could chart the course of going forward. Where I, I still think even when we look at the records in, in, in a few minutes, as I keep on teasing it, yeah. <laughs> that we look at like those type of games going from week 14 and week 17 are going to be pivotal in how this is going to shape this division. Mm-hmm. So those would be the two games that I, um, that I that the games to watch for the Baltimore Ravens next season. Now, of course, like we mentioned earlier about that they missed the playoffs three out of the last four seasons. Um, of course, we said that Harbaugh is on the hot seat. If Joe Flacco had a, he, he had pretty much one of his worst years career in, stat-wise um, in this um, last year. Um, my biggest con for them is they have five running backs that could possibly compete for the starting running back position. And when you have five guys that could compete, to start, yeah. you don't have a running back. Yeah. And in this division, you got to have a running, running back. back. Yeah. And that's not good for them going forward with, and, with and then, Flacco. and you have a, Flacco. and you have a, yeah, you have, and you have a struggling, you got a struggling um, quarterback at that. And, yeah. and, you know, normally a good running game can kind of deodorize that yeah. pretty much, quote unquote. Now, the receiver core, uh, I I do like Mike Wallace, your your guy. Once he's, upon a time, no, he ain't. Once upon a time, no, he was your guy. And he dropped the ball I in the know. Super Bowl. No, 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 don't do that. Look, man, that's what we're doing. <laughs> and of course, they got um, I got Rashad um, Pyramid. Um, they're they're good speed guys, but they're terrible at route running. Mm-hmm. Which that's true. Which I, can you trust that going forward? Can you? That's 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 the biggest thing. And 
with Baltimore, it's just kind of, you know, it's one of those things where it's like the just their offense alone is kind of one of those things where it, it's it's intriguing that you know the defense is always going to be good. It's Baltimore for some bizarre reason, you know. That's one thing with Baltimore since they, you know, since they came into their own in '96, mm -hmm. they've always have had a great defense regardless of who who was there. But this offense is just bad to a point where the defense is going to have to carry them, and that's I think that's going to be an issue. It's always been a problem, and it's always been their biggest problem because if you got a struggling quarterback, then with an, an, an unstable running back position, because like I mean, and when I when I read that that five guys. They're a, a five-man competition in the running back position. That's scary. So what's going on with the coach? Is that what's Humble, going on? Is mean, he thinking about leaving or? I mean, Humble, I mean, to me, oh, um, definitely shout out to our guy, Josh Thomas. He said, Sean, what's good? So what's good, Sean? <laughs> what's up? What's up? <laughs> oh, that's, that's, um, that's my, 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 like my little brother, hey, Josh. Yes, sir. Yes, He's sir. a dolphin fan. Yes, sir. And we'll Real be Dolphin fan, too. What's up, Josh? And we'll talk about Ryan Tannehill and Adam Case and the My Dolphins on August the 18th. So definitely stick around. Hey, man, we got a call here. Uh -oh. Let's see what we got here. All right. You're listening to Couch Coach Live. Who are we talking with? Hey, how's it going, guys? It's Lance. Oh, hey. what's up, Lance? Hey, what's going on, Lance? How you doing? My skill in it. Lance is a real good dude. Real good dude. Yeah. Man, and you let this man walk over the Steelers like that and give all this love to the Bengals. Hey, hey, oh, hold hey, on, hey, 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 Yeah, and I think with with the Big Ben, and this is more so for I think this year, and I think this year he'll just he'll, he'll do what he got to do. But like going forward, yeah, that could be that could be a um, issue going forward. So yeah, I mean, and I, I'm giving you guys a fair shake now. I mean, the Bengals, I think a lot of people, I look at it like far as being as far as they're a sleeper, like to a point where people are like writing them off, which I, I think I think last the issue yeah. is that the Bengals. Have been more talented. It's still it's a problem. Like sometimes they should have beat us and moved forward. Then when they did beat us and moved forward, they lost. It's just something else is going on with that with that team. And I think that's what he touched on. Like Pittsburgh, you know, we are who we are. We still got some things that we need to fix. And of course, with Ben talking about retiring, but they just cannot get over that hump. Yeah, that's what. We're, yeah. Yeah, and I'm yeah. Yeah, they find that, which is not an easy thing to do, but it, it, it's right within. And with the, I think the the caliber of guys that they bring in to that organization um, to play for them at times, I think um, hurts them more than helps them. They think they look to get a bargain on a guy who maybe has a uh, suspect um, history, but um, you know. And they may have talent, but at the end of the day, is that really helpful? And look how they picked up the stuff in the playoffs. Yeah. yeah, and that's my thing. And I know it's not more so we're projecting to be a Super Bowl contender, but I still think on paper that this team could win a substantial amount of games. And I think them going forward as far as playoff wise, I think we all know that their struggles in the playoffs is, um, yeah, something that, you know, Something that is just in, it's pretty much embarrassing at this point. Um, with them that winning the playoff game since 1990. Yeah, and that's what we talked. Yeah, and that's what we talked about because, like I was saying, if it was a modern type of NFL situation, he would have been gone. But with how the how the Bengals are, they're cheap. They're to a point where they're just stuck in their own ways. If it was another organization, he would be out the door. And like I, yeah, and like I made the, yeah. Most organizations, yeah, but yeah, you said um, the Browns, he's a uh, yeah. very thrifty. Very. He's and, uh, tight. He owes them money, he's not, he's not going to release him. 
<laughs> You're right about that. Yeah. Yeah, we, yeah. Yeah, he's, I think, I think he's second. I mean, you know, he's the second on I think it's, it's, Tom, it's Tom Brady and then it's him, I think. Yeah, he's right after the top. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the story, yeah. Yeah. As far as with Le'Veon, because I still think he's gonna report to Cam, and I think this is one of those things where, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's not, yeah, because like we, because we did talk about. on the field, you know, who knows, but, um, yeah, so, yeah, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna roll, man, thanks for giving us a call, man, thanks, Lance, all right, man, so, and also, um, now we, before we, uh, wrap up our NFC North preview, or the AFC North, pardon me, the Cleveland Browns, Let's talk about the Cleveland Browns, um, they are part of the division. That's what we do here. We got. Why you got to get? I mean, because you look at me like, while we're doing this, we got to do it because you know they are part of the NFC. NFC. They are part of the AFC North. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, um, last year there was one in fifteen. Um, one had a, a, somewhat of a a, 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 a bright spot. They were fifteenth in our red zone touchdown percentage. Uh -huh. Well, they um right. 54.6% um, of the time when they in the red zone, they scored. Mm -hmm. um, now, the games to watch for them, of course, we have a week five date versus the Jets. That is the uh, Sam Donald Bowl. Of course, I think he's going to be the projected number one um, overall pick, the uh, quarterback for USC. Mm -hmm. And then they got a week 11 matchup with the Jaguars. So that could be, a, you know, who knows what, what those teams could do in that, oh. in that situation. Yeah, it could possibly be a um, now, their quarterback situation is kind of in, in flux. Um, we're looking at Brock Osweiler um, and also um, Cody Kessler. And it looks like, from, from what I've been hearing, Cody Kessler is the man um, who will be starting at the quarterback position for them going forward. And then they also did draft um, Deshaun Kaiser. Um, so that, that definitely helps with that. Um, they got a, the running back, Isaiah Crowell. Um, he's a great um, speed, great toughness at the running back position, mm -hmm. and also they had another two head monster at the running back position with him and Duke Johnson. So I think that's that's decent. Um, the receiver core, you got Corey Coleman. Um, he's fast, he's an undersized receiver. That's I think that's pretty good. You got a guy like a Kenny Britt who pretty much was almost on the verge of a thousand yard um, receiving season last year. They ended up drafting the guy um, David Nokochu from um, University of Miami. Okay. I think he's going to be, I think they're going to be solid. Um, that offense, the offense is, is decent. I mean, and I think the biggest pro of them is there's no way but up. I mean, we won at 15. I don't think you, I mean, what could be worse being on 16, but I don't think this team's going to be on 16. They're going to have a drastic improvement. Um, now, defensive-wise, and of course, they got my guy, the defensive coordinator, my guy, Greg Williams. Um, former Washington Redskins um, defensive coordinator. Um, 
Of course, they got the number one pick, our guy, uh, Miles Garrett. Um, also, an, another guy like on the defensive line, uh, Danny Shelton and uh, Desmond Bryant. Now, the linebacker situation I like, well, if you're looking at Jamie Collins, Jamie Collins was the guy that, that played for New England, got traded in the middle of the season. We're like, well, what's going on with him? What's wrong with him? And he ended up having a, a pretty good um a good see good season and I like with him at his position he he can he can he's one of those he's like a hybrid type of um, linebacker where he can adapt and drop and he can adapt and drop in coverage so mm-hmm. he's one of those kind of guys where you can kind of plug him in pretty much in his spot at the linebacker position and he's he can take care of business of course the quarterback cornerback situation um, of course um, Joe Hayden and our guy Jason McCourty. You gotta understand, and of course, I'm very interested in what they're gonna do um, as far as um, Jabril Peppers from Michigan. Um, he was another number one pick from them from them last year. Well, I mean, yeah, he was a number one pick. I mean, he was a first round pick last season. Pardon me. The thing is, I think he's gonna be very interesting because I, I like his his dynamic in Michigan. So I don't know how that's gonna translate going forward to um, you know as far as going into the NFL, translate that going forward. So uh, let's put a ball on this um, on the NFC North preview with our record predictions. Um, all right, you, you, want, want, you want me to? Go. Oh, yeah, I can. You want me to go first? I can go. Okay, yeah, we can go first. All right. So of course, um, I have uh, winning the, NF- the AFC North is the Pittsburgh Steelers. I got them at twelve and four. Yeah. I think I need to say anything. I think I agree with that. That's it. That's all we need to talk about. Yeah. You know, that's what I'm saying. And that's why I wanted, wanted to let you, um, yeah. your boy Lance, why he, you know, mm-hmm. the, and then, you know, this break is going to be straight. And, I, you know, I think we know that. Yeah. We yeah. Know and that's my so thing. Yeah. So, um, and the Bengals at 10 and 6. Um, the Ravens at nine and seven, and they got the Cleveland Browns winning five. They um, winning five games this year. Yeah, at the five and eleven. Mm-hmm. At the five and eleven. Who you got, Sean Love? Um, I got the. I, I say the Steelers about the same eleven and five. It's, it's, it's five. always some okay. games that you like. Why did y'all lose those yeah. games? You know. Mm-hmm. Um. Let me see. What's the name? The Bengals. Um. Well, I'm gonna say yes. Yeah. Say about 10, about 10 and 7. 10 and 7? 10 and 7. I would say the same thing because. 10, it, 16 games. 16 games. Oh, my bad. Yeah, I'm yeah, saying 10 yeah. and 6. Because I, I, I really want to give them some more wins. I don't know why, because I was. You and my homeboy were saying yeah, the schedule is. It's, it's actually, fairly easy. It's yeah. easy. You yeah. know? It's easy. So, But I, I still think they going to mess up. So I'm going to go 10 and 6. 10 and 6. <laughs> 10 and 6. Okay. Um, All right. Raven, so. But you had the Ravens as um hmm. I think the Ravens may be uh, I think they're gonna be eight man. Eight man? Okay. I think there's some issues there. And the coach on the high seat, I think there's some issues there. Yeah. And and for the coach, see I, to me when you have a team that's on high seat, I mean coach on high seat and they look unstable, then you got a quarterback yeah. that's truly unstable. Mm. So I'm going eight eight, and then um, the Browns. <laughs> <laughs> we got the Browns, man. Let's be let's be real. Oh, man, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say they win four games. Four games, okay. four and twelve. That'd be a step up. <laughs> I mean, it was one fifteen last year. I mean, that's a step up, man. Yeah, it's, it's just you know, and you know, definitely shout out to our guy Hugh Jackson, man. Sad, you know. No, I mean it's it getting better. I don't care. I they're, really don't. They're actually, it's they, actually, it's not that bad. I think Cleveland, they had a great draft. They got a lot of guys who are going to be starting for them, that, that and they got great value for them. And I think they go great But you, we know Cleveland notoriously have had bad drafts. We this is the same team that drafted Johnny Manziel, Justin Gilbert. There's and a lot of other guys. Why is that? Because they're really there just because there's a culture there that have. And it feels like we have to have a football team. I don't care what you have to do. Well, well, the team was, was – they, they had a team. It's called the Baltimore Ravens. That's right. But we, we're not going to do that because <laughs> – and this is before we, you know, before we take our brief time on it. Just a story. And I remember um, – because, matter of fact, Art Modell died, I think, the day 
like day after the first game of the season, I think when the Raiders played mm-hmm. or whatever. And I swear to you, people like completely was still like, I still don't like, oh, what that Raiders do? They dead. <laughs> yeah, why? Like, right. why, why are we talking about something that happened? I have no book. At that time, it was 18 years ago. You know, I'm like, why are you talking about something that happened in 1985? Man, this man is dead. Like, why are we doing this? So what we do, we take a brief time out, we come back, we'll do our top five. What we do for our top five, we'll do our top five players of the NFC and the AFC North combined. And then once we do that, we'll do our, we're going to our NFC North preview. So we'll be right back. This is Couch Coach Live. Huh? Quarterback. We need to set this up quarterback. You know that? 